Jesus is so badass. He was like the king of calling out bullshit. People are like, hey, you can't talk to Samaritans. Jesus is like, bullshit. I was brought up in a system, evangelical Christianity, where this was the cardinal sin. You don't do this. But Jesus, they're categorically unclean, and our holy book tells us so. He's like, bullshit, I'm going to go talk to a woman Samaritan in broad daylight at the well. My name is Ryan from Eastlake Community Church, and this is the time we changed our mind. We started in my house. For the first couple of years, things were moving so fast, and we were growing by hundreds of people a week. When it came to the conversation around the LGBT community and church policy, or what does the Bible say about homosexuality, I always felt awkward about it. I didn't want to bring it up. I felt like I needed to scare people into believing the right thing, because the God who loves them is going to send most of human history to hell. Like, that's the good news. It sounds pretty shitty. <laughs> My name's Christina Cobb, and I do music here at East Lake Church. Ayla brought up a question of, what have you never told anyone? And I immediately shut down. What the answer was for me was that I've had attractions to the same sex. I just couldn't take it anymore. I told Ayla that we need to tell someone. I don't know what's going to happen. I might lose my job. And I was just really so fearful. I didn't need to be though. Luckily, some people, their fears make sense. She pulled me aside and was like, hey, I need to tell you that I'm dating Ayla. I was like, that's amazing. How wonderful, beautiful. But she was crying. And eventually I realized she was saying, look, I'm assuming this is my last day working here. And that moment of realizing that I had been a part of a system who had someone who I loved that much. Terrified that, relationship aside, this was a categorical, you're out. And my heart broke, and I just realized I had been a coward for too long. Frankly, I thought it would kill the church immediately. You guys get death threats? That's just me? Okay. Lucky me. Uh, I took so many sit-down meetings where people with their open Bible be like, <laughs> at some points though, I just had to look at them and go, I can tell this is hard on you. <laughs> like, I don't have a problem with anyone in the LGBT community. And in fact, I think we've all remained perpetually immature. Hell is knowing your truth and lacking the courage to live it. I don't care if the Bible says gay people suck. The Bible is pro-slavery, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. It doesn't have a very great view of women leading and teaching. I have lots of things I disagree with about the Bible. If you want to go further on the journey, you have some unloading to do. And we've decided it fell from the sky, and now we got to run it, like a manual for how to run the earth, how to legislate morality, and that's not what it is. If we need to consult an ancient book to know what to do when a human being is in front of us, I think we're screwed already. So whether Eastlake makes it, or we die in four months. It doesn't matter to me because the legacy of a faith community that's healthy is changed, transformed people who are just a little bit further along on their journey. And, and I know we've got that. I'll start. What did you think? What did you think? What did you think? What did you think? What did you think when I told you I was gay? Thought you were kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think anything because I knew it, and I just needed you to tell me it. I felt relieved. I wasn't like 
dumbfounded, shocked, and surprised. <laughs> Did you have any fears after I told you I was gay? Yes. <laughs> well, not fears of, of you, just fears for you, about people accepting you outside of your house. I, I think society has progressed an awful lot, but naturally I had fears for you for being a victim of discrimination. Were you scared to tell me you were gay? I was petrified. I had known I was gonna be in the city for two nights, and I had plans if you guys didn't want me to stay in the house with you anymore. <laughs> I can't believe you felt that way. When did you first know I was gay, if ever? Remember my favorite Power Ranger was the pink one. When did you first know I was gay? When you were like four years old with a, with a sheet wrapped around you singing Ella Fitzgerald, I mean. <laughs> there was times in life that I thought you were, especially when you would walk around the house singing show tunes. <laughs> <'Cause my laughs> I had conversations with people who were involved in the gay and bisexual community um, really early on when you were little. What? <laughs> and, and at that moment I said to myself, oh shit, he's gay. <laughs> and said, oh, you know what? That kid's gay? That kid's gay. Wow. Was I one of the first or the last people you told, and why? I guess you were kind of both, because I kind of came out all at once. <laughs> if you could set me up with one celebrity, who would it be and why? Whoa. <laughs> what about, like, Brad Pitt from Thelma and Louise? Oh, I don't, I don't like Brad Pitt. That's why I'm gay yeah. and you're not. Uh, <laughs> you are such a unique, great guy. You're, you are going to find the right person for yourself when you're not looking. And I don't give a shit about whether it's a celebrity or whether it's, a, you know, some guy who, you know, sweeps the streets. So I, I really can't find a good answer to that question. Do you have any advice out there for dads who think their son might be gay? Yes. Open up, ask them, talk to them, be honest, and let them know that you support them and love them no matter who they are. It's, it has nothing to do with them being gay. Pay, pay attention to your kids. You, know, you want the best for your child. You want to encourage them to be who they are. So if that's who they are, that's who they are. I mean, it's kind of simple. Oh, happy Father's Day, Dad. Thanks, sweetie. Yeah. Happy Father's Day, oh, Dad. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Happy Father's Day, Dad. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> uh. What did you get me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> very good. <laughs> I'm really scared for it. Um, but at the same time, I wouldn't have it in any other way. We really just thought we had a son who really liked dresses and who felt more himself in dresses. And we were okay with that. We were like, well, this is his path. We now know it was her path. Hello. Dear friends, teachers, and parents, Ellie is a name our child chose once she realized people would think she was a boy with the name Zach. That's the brother car. Is that the daddy car, the mommy car, the sister, sister. car? Sister car. Maybe when she was close to three, she started wearing dresses, which is really common for three-year-olds who are not transgender, they play around with gender roles, but the closer you get to four, the more rigid things are and the less people play. She's one of Elsa and she has magic powers. Ellie has told us she's a girl in many ways. The most clear has been, I'm a girl in my heart and my brain. Well, why don't you both sit next no, to each other? No, girl side. This is well, girl we can switch. side. I can't say that everyone has the courage and bravery that Four and a half year old would have. Oh, Dad, All lift right. me up. But in this world, people should be uh, should be allowed to be who they want to be. Oh, oh. Is it your back? We only care about the well-being of Ellie, and we will do every single thing we can so our child knows she is loved for whoever she tells us she is. <laughs> I just want her to be happy. It's really cliche. I want her to be accepted. I want her to be able to have access to whatever her passion is. It's time to get ready for bed, so you need to get jammies. I don't want her to feel discouraged just based on how society thinks that she should be. These okay. rugs are so soft. Okay. 
This is the way our child was born, and we love her. Mama, yes. look, he's doing this. <laughs> as long as she knows that she has a great foundation here at home and with her family and friends, that gives her a better chance at going through life as who she wants to be. Thank you for your support, JR, Vanessa, Ronnie, and Ellie. Mommy loves you, whoever you are. You are her shining star. So I came out to my parents about 10 years ago, and the world didn't end like I thought it was going to. My parents love me, and they want the best for me, so naturally they were a little scared for me. I'm from North Carolina, and things are different down there, and they don't really understand that things are different everywhere else, and so they wanted to keep it kind of hush-hush. I lived with that situation for, you know, the past 10 years. Um, jump ahead to now, I am in a long-term relationship. I live with my boyfriend, Alfonso, and he has a very tight-knit family. And uh, they're very open and honest about uh, our sexuality. And um, there was this instance where uh, it was Saturday morning and I was sleeping in like I tend to, and Alfonso was up and his nieces came over. And his tiniest niece, who's about three years old, opened our door while I was still asleep and said, hey, are you his boyfriend? And so I lifted my head and half asleep said, yeah. And she said, no, and ran out. And I was like, oh my God, this is my nightmare. <laughs> And uh, I heard her little footsteps come back towards the, uh, towards the door and I looked over and she walked in. She said, hey, do you boys hold hands and kiss? And I was like, oh God, here we go. Yes, yes, we do. And she said, no, and ran out again. And at this point I knew sleepy time was over and I got up and I walked into the living room where uh, Alfonso had just made breakfast and uh, the little girl got her scrambled eggs and looked down and said, no! <laughs> so I realized this was just the phase that she was in. And as the day went on, there was no big deal. Uh, she was totally cool with me. And by the end of the day, she left and said, Dio, I love you. <laughs> and it warmed my heart because I saw that I had been living with this fear for about 10 years of a world that is no longer around us. We have, we have a new generation of people who, despite the fact that they haven't seen a fairy tale with two princes, doesn't mean that they're going to be freaked out or that they're going to judge me. The world is different now. I've known I'm gay since I was four years old, and I was so scared of letting my secret out that I stopped talking. I went selectively mute for about 20 years and I was completely suicidal. I gave up. My name is Grace Kim and this is the time I changed my mind. I have no idea how to identify. No one wants to be four years old and realize that you're gay and that you can't change it and that you're going to hell for it. My whole life I tried to change it. I would do really, really crazy things looking back. I would buy like drugs off of homeless people on Craigslist. I would drive at like 120 miles per hour with my eyes closed. My apartment was completely covered in trash. I was just living in squalor because I felt like I was trash and I might as well live in it. I needed help very badly. While I was about to kill myself, I tried to remember the best day of my life and I realized there was none. So I decided to give myself one last day to be the best day of my life. I just went around San Francisco, my hometown, just trying to be happy for one more day. And I actually had the best day of my life. I went on a cable car, I went to a bookstore and I just really tried to be in the moment. I realized nothing changed except my mindset. 
I wrote out all the things I've ever wanted to do. I pulled them out of a jar at random and forced myself to do it. And I grew so much in that period of time. I used to sit in church and think about how ashamed I was for being a sinner and how I was going to hell. But now I'm throwing singles mixers and I'm surrounded by 30 roller skating lesbians. <laughs> Suicide in the LGBT community is huge. You're always affected by it, maybe not directly, but you always know someone. It's not easy to be in a world that tells you you're invalid. I realize what I want to do with my life is just help people reach this point that I have. I started Best Day Project. It's an LGBTQIA youth suicide prevention organization. You can submit to me your biggest dream and you might win it from me. I accept all dreams, large and small. I just got one yesterday from a trans boy who says his biggest dream is to just have a bind and some hormone blockers and he's 13. Gender is a socially constructed concept and it shouldn't dictate what people like and dislike. And if we all acknowledge that, then I think a lot of kids growing up now won't have to go through what I did. There really seems like there's no hope, but there's always hope if you're alive.